Hey, I'm Roberto, uncle, dreamer, and Disney kid at heart. As a business profit strategist and community leader, I've had the chance to work with multiple business owners and community leaders ranging from napkin ideas to eight-figure brands. And along the way, there's been some failures, amazing successes, and lots of friendships have been born. Now, community leaders come from all walks of life and business. They might identify as a coach, consultant, speaker, a nonprofit leader, or a maker, but here's the thing. They all have one thing in common. They are purpose-driven brands and leaders seeking to create an even bigger impact in the world with and for their communities. This is the show that brings together community leaders and business leaders with communities to reveal their mistakes and successes to building and creating a highly impactful and profitable community. This is the Connected Community Leader Podcast. All right. Well, welcome to another episode of the Connected Community Leader. And I am here today with another amazing guest. Uh, I want to say one of my favorite guests, and y'all probably are used to hearing me say that all the time because these are some of my favorite people. So today we have uh, my internet marketing mentor and someone who's become a dear friend over the years, uh, Tom Antion. Now, Tom Antion has never had a job. Um, and there's a long story about that. I'm sure we'll get to that today. He's an internet multimillionaire, guy next door, loves to sit in his Archie Bunker recliner, and he's the founder of the only licensed, dedicated internet marketing school in the country and the subject of the Hollywood documentary, The American Entrepreneur, which will be premiering later this year. And one of Tom's biggest accomplishments is just like Thomas Edison, he's found about 10,000 things that don't work. So welcome, Tom. Good to have you. Hey, Roberto. Yeah, congratulations on your new podcast. See, I, I didn't really know the name for sure. I thought, I mean, I know you have like a business or an LLC or something called Connected to Propel, I think, or something like that. And I didn't have any luck with that one. You know, I was going into bars and trying to pick up women, and, and they said, you should start a business called Connected to Repel. <laughs> so I was going to warn you about that particular name, but but I I think I got it wrong. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, and you know, um, one of the things that I always love about you is that you are the the consummate prankster and the jokester, <laughs> and uh, have the ability to take. Did you Literally, say the, I, the constipated one? Is that what you just said? <laughs> the yes, the, the constipated the, prankster? Okay. Constipated and consummated. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, he's actually not kidding. Because I, I had an entertainment company for six years called Prank Masters, where we custom designed practical jokes. Did about 4,000 of them in and around the Washington, D.C. area. And you know the, the funny thing, Roberto's we get the weirdest requests from accountants and attorneys, but they would never use, you know, let us use their name for testimonials, <laughs> but they always wanted really bizarre stuff. I think they made a few TV shows about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, oh, well, you know, Tom, I am, I'm glad to have you here today. You've been telling me for, gosh, I don't know, over 300 episodes of, of your podcast, <laughs> Screw the Commute Ago, that Roberto, you should do a podcast. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, we'll do that one day. We'll get there one day. Uh, I told you that podcasting was a fad, uh, which kind of reminds me, you know, back in 2011, 2012, when, when I first got to meet you and was looking at this whole internet marketing thing. And was seeing it, I was just like, yeah, this whole internet marketing thing, like, I don't know, like, is it going <laughs> to work? Is gonna it going to go be anywhere. around here? It's never going to go anywhere. <laughs> and, you know, fast forward to, to 2020, all of a sudden, internet marketing is the, the newest, latest, greatest, hottest fad for everybody in the world. <laughs> right. uh, and I like to say that I got to have a little bit of a head start on some of the things to do uh, because of your school, because of your training and you know, you've now taught, gosh, I don't know how many thousands of entrepreneurs about internet marketing and public speaking over the past several years. Yeah, yeah. And and to be honest, I, I poo-pooed podcasting for, for a long time. Nobody was making any money. And it was all kind of a big ego trip. 
Uh, but now that's changed. I mean, people are, you know, new cars where you can just talk the name of your show into your dashboard and it'll start playing. Uh, all these Alexa and Google devices in people's homes, there's 60 million of them just in the U.S. You can talk into it and it'll start playing your podcast and people are making serious money with them now. So, so I, I actually wish I'd have started a little bit sooner, but uh, in the beginning, yeah, it was, uh, it was iffy whether it was going anywhere, but but it's here to stay now because uh, people are, uh, I mean, it's exceeded XM radio because XM you got to pay for. And so <laughs> this is all free and there's, there's just tons and tons of great information out there. And great information in the fields that, that people want, uh, which is another thing that I like, um, you know, I, you know, using an example, like you mentioned XM, I remember being able to scroll through things like a hundred and whatever channels and still not find what I wanted. <laughs> so to have, you know, a podcast and the ability just to be able to say, this is the, the, the thing that I want today. So, you know, in the case of your podcast, screw the commute, like, Hey, I want to figure out how I can not sit in traffic that doesn't involve a quarantine, of course, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and actually be able to get, get paid and to be able to, to make a living. And, um, you know, I, I think a lot of that, came from the lessons and the stories um, from your dad. You know, I know this year, 2020 has been, um, I think the, the best word is is interesting, be just because there is not one encompassing word that covers the ups and the downs that the economy has seen, that the workforce has seen, but also the complete opportunity for the rise of entrepreneurship and the rise of people to be able to, you know, become uh, better digital marketers to create products and programs and services to be able to reach people, to teach people, and to be able to do it all at home uh, while wearing a face mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, for years and years, I've always preached, uh, you know, it's like an insurance policy. And then I, I one of the terms I always use, and you're not limited by any local economy. And then this pandemic hit. I never <laughs> thought you'd never be limited by every economy on earth. However, it, uh, my business is just trucking right along because there's still enormous numbers of people out there that have money that are willing to give it to you if you can give them some value. So even the pandemic didn't stop uh, the ability to, to sell online and mostly digital now, so it's 97% profit, so you don't really have to be perfect at it or do enormous volume to keep your bills paid and to make a good, healthy living. So it's, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe it is a fad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that it'd have to be a, a pretty long fad. So uh, when did you actually get into internet marketing. And I think that this is something important, you know, because one of the things you've always done is, has been extremely transparent with, Hey, this isn't a get rich quick thing. It's not going to happen overnight. And there's a lot of people right now who, you know, we've seen speakers, people that, that you and I both know had that their entire business model was being on the road, a hundred nights, 200 nights, 300 nights a year speaking on stages. And then when this pandemic hit and the, the lovely ripple effect that's come after it, and I, I say that sarcastically lovely, you know, the, the ripple effect of the pandemic, we've seen people that you and I both know, their entire business model stop, be flipped upside down and actually ask themselves like, hey, how am I going to feed my family now? Because if I'm not on a stage, I'm not getting paid. Or, you know, if I'm not out doing my own live event, I'm not getting paid. And so they saw some people, some very successful, what they thought, seven-figure businesses come to a halt when the pandemic shut everything down. And so you've been at internet marketing for several years. What got you started in it? <laughs> yeah, several years. And, you know, like as part of that, what should people be, be doing now that some of the ways they make money may have shifted? Well, first of all, some of those people that you're talking about, I'm glad they're not out in the road rip robbing people <laughs> because I've been quite a consumer advocate for many years. You know, I know a lot of the, this podcast is about integrity. And so uh, I'm glad they're not out there because it's reducing their chance to rob people. So that's uh, that's part of it. But But I got started when the commercial Internet started around 1994. And I had already been a successful uh, on-the-road speaker 
uh, selling products and so forth, but it was hard enough to sell products across the street, let alone around the world from your desktop. So when I saw the commercial internet coming around, I said, you know what, I'm going to figure this out one way or the other. And I started studying like crazy. And, and to be honest, the, the, uh, here's the transparency. I didn't make a nickel for the first two years until I got good training. There was a guy at the time, his name was Corey Rudel. He's unfortunately passed away in a tragic uh, car accident. But he was like a 31-year-old grandfather of internet marketing. And he was making like $5 million a year from his apartment. And so at the time, and this is 1996, I took a half-hour consultation with him. It was $1,230 for a half hour in 1996. <laughs> this was a, you know, a big leap here. But, uh, and then I, of course, bought all his materials and I got good training. In fact, one tip that he gave me on that call has made over a million dollars just by itself on one tip on one web page. So getting good training of people that have blazed the trail before you is really, really important. The, the problem nowadays is, is that picking somebody that's credible, I mean, a lot of people, there's a lot of people out there that they're known by the you know, people like me that have been around. They only teach you something after it doesn't work anymore and they've already sucked all the money that they could have. <laughs> right? So, so, you know, but as a newbie, you don't know that. So you just have to be really, really careful with who you deal with and, uh, and check them out thoroughly. And, and even some of them that I've gone after in my, you know, uh, consumer advocate role flood the internet with false positives. Or in other words, false testimonials about themselves. Like I'm not a scammer, you know, so-and-so is not a scammer. <laughs> And you know they are if, if you see that many that many uh, notices on the internet that says they aren't. You know you won't see much of anything like that if they're a real reputable person. So so the thing is is get good training. But what I saw then was an insurance policy by having multiple streams of income. I was doing two hundred some dates a year. I've done over three thousand paid presentations in twelve countries. So I was a road warrior. However. I knew that it wasn't safe to only do that. You have to have lots of things going as a, what if I got hurt even, just broke my leg or got sick or whatever might happen. And at nine, when 9-11 hit, very famous people that you would recognize their name went bankrupt because that's all they did was on stage. So the thing is, is diversify your revenue streams. And even the, you know, real estate's been all the hot rage. Well, guess what? The commercial people uh, are just just freaking out. I mean, I myself closed my school to go downsize to a smaller building. I was paying $7,500 a month for nothing, air. The only employees are working at home. You know, so uh, commercial real estate people are just freaking out because these companies are seeing that, hey, we're getting as much productivity. The employees love it. And uh, we can knock off 75% of our real estate costs, you know, so so real estate isn't as hot as it, it was, maybe residential, but you got to get multiple revenue streams. And if they're digital, you have 97% profit and you don't have to be perfect to get an insurance policy for you and your family. I love it. Yeah, it is something that has changed my life. And uh I'll, we'll, we'll make sure that everybody gets a link. Uh, there's actually an episode of Tom's podcast where we talked about how just exactly having a lifestyle business, being able to create content online and be able to serve people through digital products and courses and offerings allowed me to make it through one of the roughest times of my life. And so mm -hmm. I invite you to head over to Screw the Commute to be sure to check out that one. There's also another one over there on sponsorship. So I, find, I know that one's episode 50, but I forget what the other one is. And I only remember it was episode 50 because when Tom launched his podcast and asked me to be on it, I said, sure. Only if I'm on episode 50. And he said, why episode 50? And I said, well, because maybe I'll have my life together by then. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is a good point. I mean, uh, you know, you went some serious stuff with your uh, uh, family health and all these things. And every family suffers uh, or every person, you know, has things happen. You know, the, uh, the world happens to you. But uh, I, I know when... I forget what year it was, but when my mother started going south, I took three months off and I came back 
and I did more business than when I was here. And so people said, well, you must be holding yourself back. You know, I took three months off to take care of my mother and get her in a safe place and all this stuff. And I don't know, in January, we did 140,000 and February, 190,000. These were, there was more than I usually was doing. So, so, uh, most people said the people I knew said, if we took three months off, we would be bankrupt. And so I don't want that for people out there, especially with just, you know, some effort, they can uh, do this. And it can be very uh, fun because, uh, you know, I've teach, uh, taught for years uh, how to make your hobbies tax deductible. You know, so you can be doing things you really enjoy and getting paid for it and getting tax deductions. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not pie in the sky. It's work, but it's uh, very enjoyable work. Yeah, it's definitely enjoyable work. And definitely not an overnight thing. One of the things that I've loved about learning about internet marketing and email marketing from you and being able to implement these things over the years is that just a little bit of effort can have big lasting returns. And so it's something that you do once. And I, I, I remember that one of your anti on success methods is <laughs> do it once and get paid over Work and, and pay, over pay, and pay, over. Pay, pay, pay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, one so, example of that is I, I had a layover at, uh, I, one of my principles is I, I use what I call your throwaway time where people would fritter away and watch CNN at the, at the airport while they're waiting on a layover. I wrote an entire ebook in a four hour big delay layo that ebook has brought in 3.6 million dollars so far for that four hour investment i think i probably put a two hour investment in several years later just update it and it brings in anywhere from six to fifteen thousand dollars a month still you know from <clears throat> instead of just frittered my time away i created a piece of intellectual property that brings in money like crazy so so uh, don't don't throw away your throwaway time. And I'm not saying don't do things you enjoy and let your mind take a break. I, I binge watched the equalizer, the original eighties version, 80 some episodes, a couple months. <laughs> so so I, I'm not uh, the total workaholic, but, uh, but still uh, you, you, you got to take some of that time and create things that are going to pay you back over and over and over instead of eat your money. Yeah, you know, and I know that those are some of the things that, that you learned from your dad. And I remember yeah, years ago, you um, wrote this, I guess I'll call it a memorial or a, a tribute to your dad, where you, you shared so many of your dad's stories and, and the lessons learned. And, you know, will you share a few of those with us and, and how they relate to people's businesses and not even just their business, just their life, you know, some of these amazing lessons that, that your dad passed on to you and then because of through you have now passed on to thousands of students around the world. Well, yeah, the, um, it was actually the, I was uh, tasked to do his uh, eulogy. You know, I was a professional speaker and all my brothers I said, oh, you do it, you do it, you do it. And so it really just poured out of me and I, and I, I try to get other people to do this before their parents die. And then I also know that some people don't have the kind of parent that I had. And, and so maybe you can do opposite. You know, you can always learn from your parents, either do what they uh, be like them or be not be like them, one or the other. But, but my dad was great. And uh, he only went to second grade. He came from uh, Syria on a cattle boat through Ellis Island. And my name's actually a mistake. Uh, he came from Antioch, Syria, which they named you from where you were born. And so he was Saman from Antioch. And when they got to Ellis Island, they couldn't read it. And so he's Sam Antion. That's how he got his name. So he's up there on the wall at Ellis Island. So, so uh, he taught me so many things, like, like do a good job. So, for instance, I was probably 9, 10 years old. And he was an electrician by trade and also an entrepreneur. He built a big truck stop and he built all our uh, uh, motel and all these things. And so. I'm watching him wire something. Uh, and I said, Dad, why don't you just cut the wires across the, uh, the board there and save some wire and it'd be cheaper? Oh, my God. He looked at me. I can still see daggers coming out of his eyes. <laughs> I mean, looking at me. He says, don't you ever, ever cut corners and cut costs to save a little money 
I want you to do professional work at whatever you do so you can be proud of it. When people look at it, they'll say a professional did it. And if anything goes wrong with it, it's easier to troubleshoot. Don't you ever cut corn. <laughs> right? So, I mean, oh, I'm shivering just thinking about it because that's lived with me uh, my whole life. And, and you can build a great reputation that way. In fact, when we take it into the business world, so if I create a product, a lot of times, you know, I'm not lazy at all, but sometimes I just put an email. <laughs> I don't even write a sales letter. But if my name is on it, people know it's going to be great value. And so that's what I want everybody to build to. Don't, you know, a lot of the generation coming up wants the most money with the least effort and poor value. And that's why there's flash in the pan. I mean, you can see these, I see these guys and girls Oh, there's 300 people in an auditorium cheering for them. And then the next week they've disappeared, you know, because they don't give great value. And, uh, and so that was one thing, man, it was like uh, daggers coming out of his eyes that you better do a professional job. And still to this day, uh, it's how I feel. And then right behind me, you, you know, we're not doing video. You can't see it. Uh, but a while back, I think it was before I knew you, we had a event kind of, uh, memorial to him also called fusion where i had professional speaking and entrepreneurship and internet marketing all in one big event and if you've heard of johnny cash uh he was a great country singer and he had a song called a boy named sue and it was about an old drunk cowboy that raised uh, gave his kid this name sue because the drunk cowboy figured he wouldn't be around to raise the kid and he wanted to make him tough and make him scrap and everybody teasing him and fight it out so that was the premise of the song well my dad was 50 when he had me so uh he uh and, and like i said he only went to second grade but i mean i've witnessed him sitting down when when he retired and reading the entire world book encyclopedia a lot of the young people never even seen one of them, but it's like 26 volumes plus the updates. <laughs> he read the whole thing. So he was, he was brilliant. So he wouldn't, he figured he wouldn't be around. So he would, right when I could start crawling, I mean, literally crawling, he would put pillows in front of me and put uh, my toys on the other side to teach me how to overcome obstacles. And to this day, I'm unstoppable. And now I won't cheat anybody or step on them to get where I'm going. But if you tell me I can't do something, you better get out of the way as I blow by you doing it. And, you know, see, folks, when somebody tells you you can't do it, something, that doesn't mean anything. You know what that means? It means they can't do it. It has nothing to do with you. So those are just two of the things, you know, be self-sufficient, you know, climb and crawl to get to where you're going and don't quit. And, um, and it just, uh, it was like eight or nine other, other <laughs> things that I learned from. So I try to get people to write something like that before their parents die. What did you learn from them? What are the big principles you learn? And uh, it's, it's really quite a tribute to them, especially, you know, <laughs> before they die. Yeah, I remember I actually went through that uh, mm -hmm. initially for my grandmother. Um, it was many years ago. It was actually... Y'all know I love Disney. So I was actually at Disneyland when I got the text from my sister that they had mother in hospice. And um, even as, as you know that was going on, I was starting to get the text from the family, very similar to you from other members of the family, except there wasn't a tablet that was text messaging back then um, when you were asked to write the eulogy. Yeah. <laughs> it was like smoke signals. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, they were just like, hey, you're the public speaker. And I'm just like, there is a difference between training people and inspiring people <laughs> and writing about somebody's life, like literally being a biographer. And so actually, I remember I was just like, hey, how do I do this? And I called you and you're like, oh, I have this eulogy ebook. And I like literally went and got this eulogy ebook that you created. And I don't even remember. It was like 12 bucks, 15 bucks. I don't even remember. Um, but like sat down with it and, and did that, you know, with, with my grandmother. Uh, and then, you know, just last year in 2019, I went back and dug up that eulogy. And when it was time to write the, the eulogy for my own dad. And it was, 
you know, one of, like you said, something that I wish that I had done while they were still alive. Um, just a, a, an amazing exercise and not even just exercise. I would say it's, it's a great way to, to show people what you've learned from them while they're still here and to see what else you can learn. Um, and one of the stories that, that I love that you tell, and you're probably in your head right now going, which one? (laughs) 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 But I remember that, uh, you shared with me one time about, um, somebody had come up to you at one point and shared with you how your dad had really taken on the responsibility for really taking care of another family, you know, that, that had a father who wasn't fully present in their life. And over the years, I've been able to see in you, you know, this complete integrity and fairness. And that when you see people that are willing to fight for themselves, that you're there to help them fight for themselves. So will you share kind of that story and how that's translated into where you are today because you have the business that you have, because internet marketing is something that has not faded away and provides you the time. And when I say the resources, I mean the financial resources, the the time resources, the people resources to be able to help people that you may have never been able to thought you'd be able to help because of the way you built this business. Well, the, um, this, the, uh, the story was is that the funeral was coming up for my dad and he was 94, all right, when he passed. And so all his friends, you know, that he'd hang out at McDonald's with and drink coffee um, were gone. And so I'm thinking when I'm going to arrive at this funeral that it's going to be kind of barren. You know, it's going to be me and the, my brothers and <clears throat> my mother, and that's, you know, maybe a couple people. And that's it. <laughs> so I get there. <laughs> the place is freaking packed. And, uh, people I'd never seen, of, heard of, nothing. And they're all coming up to me um, and uh, saying, you're the prince, right? You're the prince. I said, wait a minute. I'm not prince. I don't purple rain. What are you talking about? He said, your dad used to call you the prince. I never do that ever. And they said, uh, and they started telling me stories of the old days. Some uh, where he... Uh, he took the cousins and gave taught them stuff so that they could uh, have jobs. And, and in the depression, this is a, they cover this a little bit in the American entrepreneur documentary that's coming out that um, everybody was, there was no work, but he said, I'm strong. I'm tough. I'm not going to sit here when the country needs help. So he just goes down to a loading dock and starts loading stuff. And, <laughs> and he's loading stuff faster than three guys put together. And, the foreman comes over and says, who's that guy? And he said, oh, I don't know. He just started loading stuff. And he went over and hired my dad on the spot because he was doing three times the work. And my dad taught my cousins to go down and give before you get and work hard. And so he never, he was never out of work ever in my whole life through ups and downs, economies, people begging to have my dad on the job. So, uh, <laughs> so so I kind of was around that all the time, but he, he uh, taken on uh, some old drunk was uh, abusing a family, a bunch of kids and stuff in his neighborhood. He, he grew up in Car- Carnegie, Pennsylvania, actually put the first electric light bulb in Carnegie, Pennsylvania, my dad did. And, uh, and so the old man disappeared or I don't know what happened to him. So my dad took over the family and uh, it was a nickel, he, uh, and maybe 20 cents. I can't remember. He could buy a whole bag of groceries for them for the whole week and so uh, and then when the kids got old enough he taught them trades and they all got jobs and they thought the sun rose and set on my dad guess what I had never heard a word about this in my entire life but all these people were telling me how dad's the one that helped them when they were down and so you know I thought Jesus you know this is what I was made from and uh And so that's why when I started coming up and getting, you know, high skill level and was able to help people, um, everybody at my level was charging 50 or a hundred grand up front. And I know a lot of these guys, if you gave them 50 grand up front, you'd be chasing them around Mexico, trying to find them, you know, they, they wouldn't do the work to help you. 
So I thought, yeah, I'm going to turn this upside down. I'm going to, going to make them all mad. I don't care about those guys. So I charged a, like a, a 10% of what they were charging as an entry fee. And then I tied my success to their success. So for me to get my big money, which was, you know, it was worth it for me to do all this work, but it was too risky for them and wasn't giving small business people a chance. So I tied my success to their success. And that was been, been about 20 years ago. And 1,700 students later, the program is still going strong where people love it because they know I'm not going to disappear on them. And if they don't make big money, I don't get my big money. So uh, it's fair. And that's one of my big principles of life is being fair. So it all kind of stemmed from uh, learning from my dad uh, these principles that I live by. And it's very easy to make decisions when you have principles. You know, you don't have to worry about, okay, should I charge this or should I charge this? Well, this is fair. And so that's what I'm going to do. Easy, easy, uh, easy. So, uh, so yeah, it all, all came from him. Yep, all came from him. And I'm going to go back to something earlier that you said today in the interview. Um, I, I now know it as something called the Gazarnik technique. <laughs> There you go, the Zagorn, Zagornik technique, yeah. <laughs> and I, I learned that from you, uh, well, A, in your mentorship program, but B, while uh, taking your copywriting course, Copywriting mm -hmm. 901. Yep. Um, so earlier in today in the interview, and if you're listening to this, I want, I want you to hear this because you're probably still thinking about it, right? So Tom said, I learned so much from this guy, including one tip that's made me over a million dollars. <laughs> and so I remember you saying, and, and I agree with this now, I didn't at the time, that you know, copywriting's the probably the most important skill that you've learned in business and life. Um, so I would say, what is that 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 number one tip? And how has copywriting changed your business? Okay, well, with regard to the tip, I was just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I wasn't. no, I'll give you the tip. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the tip was is that um, at the time, uh, and I still sell it to this day uh, because it's kind of an evergreen product. It's the uh, the uh, Wake Em Up Video Professional Speaking System. It's the number one best selling ever uh, online, probably offline too, uh, speaking system to teach you how to be a professional speaker and teach you how to be great on stage. So I had a picture of the whole system. It was all DVDs and books and workbooks and all this stuff right at the top of my sales page. And Corey uh, looked at it and he says, Tom, get that picture the heck off of your page. I said, what? You know, you're all proud of your program, you know, your, your product. And so he said, think about this, Tom. It's right in front of your nose. Think about this. If somebody sees an expensive looking product on a web page, what do they do? And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, they probably wonder how much it costs, right? He said, yes. They scroll immediately to the bottom to see what the price is. And he said, come on, Tom, you're a smart guy. Is it better to show people the benefits of a product before the price or uh, the price before the benefits? And I said, well, well, obviously, yeah, they should, you know, see the benefits first. Well, look what you just did. You get you set up a thing online so that they saw an expensive product, scrolled to the bottom, thousand bucks, are you kidding? I don't want to be a speaker that bad, and they left. He said, I want you to write what we call an advertorial, which is an advertisement editorial. He says, I want you to take the same information that all the great things about being a professional speaker, and you had a butler in Thailand, and you got to fly a 747 simulator, and you had people running to get you coffee, you know, all this stuff that's great about being a speaker and get it in there but make it look like an article so that there's no reason for them to scroll down to try to look for a price when they're just reading an article and seeing all these benefits so we did testing at the time this is called split testing folks in case you're wondering so we ran traffic to the sales letter with the picture and the one without the picture the one without the picture sold four times as many thousand dollar videos as the one with the picture. All right. So this was my two by four to the head that to lead with benefits and good copy and make people really want your product. And then the price becomes, you know, 
I won't say insignificant, but it becomes way less significant. So that was the thing is to don't, you know, hide your products, write advertorials, lead people uh, with benefits, and you'll sell way more stuff. So that was the, that was the tip. And that's why that $1,230 was worth it by hundreds of times. Man. Okay, y'all. Y'all heard it here. Now, it's this not is about a, your fancy picture. <laughs> right. It's not on a $20 book. This is on to sell more expensive stuff. You know, everybody knows what a book should cost. But, but this is uh, for bigger ticket products, which is what we want you to sell. You know, I, I was just reminded of a story as you said that. So I've got this friend named Boudreaux. And I don't think you've met Boudreaux yet. He's from, from Lake Charles, Louisiana. And his dad used to be a pharmacist. And Boudreaux became a car salesman. Um, and he's still a car sales trainer to this day. In fact, one of his students has the Guinness Book of World Records for selling the most cars ever in a month. And he consistently, some of his students consistently sell over 100 cars a month at the dealerships. Wow. There was that one guy that wrote the book on that a while back, but I guess they beat him, huh? Yeah. So I will, if it was Ali, I forget Ali's last name, uh, but Boudreaux, Boudreaux is his mentor. Okay. And um, Boudreau always says that when it comes to sales, and, and you kind of hit it here with the picture, I just, I didn't know that, that full story. Boudreau will do these workshops for car trainers. And obviously, for, there's a few women, for the most part, the car salespeople are, are mainly men. Mm-hmm. And Boudreau will walk in and get on stage. He goes, how many of you want to sell more cars? And of course, they, they all raise their hand. And he goes, I'm here to tell you your problems, your pee pee. <laughs> And they just like, they chuckle, they look around, it's all uncomfortable. They're just like, what the heck is this guy talking about? He's like, yes, you're not selling more cars because of your (laughs) pee-pee. And then he tells them, you're selling or trying to sell a car from the viewpoint of your problem and the possibility that your life can go into if you sell this person a car versus the problem that the mother who shows up looking for a minivan has and the possibility she could have if she has that minivan when you're trying to sell her a Corvette because you're thinking about your commission. Mm -hmm. And I was reminded of that when you told the story about that picture because it's the same same thing in a different way is as an internet marketer, some people could be so excited about, I got this thing, I got this thing, you should go do this versus saying, what is the problem they really have that, that needs to be solved and how do we paint that picture for them? To show them and that this, possibility. And this is all copywriting, which is the second part of your question. You know, I have preached for years. It's the number one skill in my entire business career. If I, if you took away everything I had, copywriting would uh, start me off and save me because it infiltrates everything that you do. It infiltrates your blog posts, your videos uh, for video sales letters and video scripts. And even letters you write to people move people to action with subtle language i'm not talking about obnoxious stuff all right but in some in some markets yeah it's it would be obnoxious to other markets so uh but the techniques are the same like the one that you just mentioned the zagarnik technique is luma zagarnik was a russian psychologist and psychiatrist who uncovered the principle of the human mind that it cannot stand unfulfilled curiosity and you were sitting this whole interview brewing on that <laughs> I wonder what that tip was. Tip was. I'm like, That's, I've known him for years and I don't yeah. know this. Like, <laughs> yeah. what is this? <laughs> so, and I'll tell you how powerful this is. I was uh, going to do a speech in Los Angeles one time and the news is on. Now, I've had two news directors in my program sitting in my living room and they say, oh, yeah, we just lie to you about stuff coming up in the next segment. It's not going to come up till the end of the show. And so... I'm sitting there, I'm getting ready, and the TV's on in my hotel room, and it says, hey, uh, guess who Brittany kissed? We'll tell you in the next segment. All right, so I'm getting dressed, and I'm thinking, I don't give a darn about Britney Spears. I wonder who it was. <laughs> you know, see, that you can't help it. And they keep teasing me, and they're teasing me, and I'm d- dawdling around just to hear it, and I'm almost late to go downstairs, and it's clear at the end of the show, They say, oh, it was that kid that she married for like 12 hours in Las Vegas, right? So it didn't really matter. I don't care about Britney Spears, but that's how powerful just that one technique is. And there's about 30 to 35 different elements like that that go into sales letters. 
And most people don't know any of them and they just slop some stuff down and they at uh, one time and they hope that it works. But uh, the, there's a thing, like I said, called split testing. That's how I knew that the advertorial sold four times more than the one with the picture. So you have to test things. And if somebody tells you they know what's going to work, run away and hold your wallet because the marketplace will tell you what's going to work. But getting this skill can save you a fortune and make you a fortune. Plus, if you feel like it and you like writing, you can rent yourself out to write for other people. Sometimes you get a percentage of their sales and you can make 15 to 5,000 bucks to write a sales letter for somebody. So some of the big guys get 25,000 bucks. So, so uh, most powerful skill in my entire career by far. Love it. So as we begin to head towards the end of today's No, don't say it's true. I can't take it. I'm lonely. <laughs> but everybody's at home by themselves. Uh, yeah, but we got dogs. two German shepherds. Um, Each one yes, of us has two German shepherds to keep us company. And if and if y'all don't have pets, y'all, if y'all don't have German shepherds, y'all should get one or two or three. Yeah, get a couple. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, that'll happen. You meet Tom, you go over, you play with a couple German shepherds, play with a protection dog. And the next thing you know, you've got two, you're calling Tom. And you're like, hey, I got two dogs. <laughs> exactly. <So>. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of them out there that need mommies and daddies. Absolutely. And, and y'all adopt from a rescue. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> adopt from a rescue. So what are some of the best either, and you can take this whatever direction you think, best books or courses or podcasts that people right now in their business looking to create a bigger impact, to make that more income, to possibly pivot their business, you know, what are the best courses, podcasts, or books that have helped you along the way that you think could maybe help somebody else in their journey? The only one thing they need to do in their whole life, it's something I've been listening to for years, is the connected community leader. <laughs> it's only, it's yeah, only I've one been listening to it for years. It's like, oh, it's like <laughs> years I've been listening to this. <laughs> so, so, um, but um, uh, there, there's one book that has to do with the last topic that we talked about. It's called Influence the Psychology of Persuasion. And most guys like me have read it six, seven times. It was the basis of my, uh, all my work. And I took it off in different directions for my copywriting 901 program, which is a, a, a more interactive. It shows you more examples and things like that. But, but that's been probably one of the most uh, powerful books in, in my entire life. Uh, you know, most people would say the Bible, but I'd be lying and then I'd get a lightning bolt in my face. <laughs> and then you look like uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that's definitely, uh, definitely one. Uh, the Corey Rudel stuff is all obsolete now, but, uh, but you got to get, uh, you really have to get hooked up with somebody that's done, you know, really done it. And that's the, the whole thing is so many of the people coming up never really did it, but they're happy to try to teach you how to be rich, you know, but they're, they're not rich. They're having trouble making their car payments. So, um, so get a tutor, get a mentor. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I, um, uh, I'm very much in tune with people getting actual training that cuts their learning curve. And I'm a do it yourself where I learn. I'm a continuous learner. I just recently, since the last time we talked, I got my, uh, two ham radio licenses. And just uh, this week, I got my EPA certification license to handle refrigerants. <laughs> it's like, you say, what the heck are you doing that for? Well, I own seven air conditioners at my house <laughs> that uh, the refrigerant is now obsolete. So I just went to, to Wawa parking lot. I don't know if you have Wawa's down there. It looks like Piggly Wiggly or but and I'm like making a, a drug deal in the parking lot buying a tank of refrigerant. <laughs> so so uh, continuous learning. I mean, it just keeps your brain sharp, even if it's not in the exact field that uh, you're you know you're dealing with. Uh, your mind will be sharper. I mean, there's studies out on how doing crossword puzzles uh, keeps you from getting Alzheimer's and just things like that. So keep continuous learning in your life. Don't just veg out and, 
on you know Netflix all day long. But uh, that book, Influence, is uh, really a top, top uh, one, a classic of the industry. And then uh, learn how to, how to do stuff. The more you can do for yourself, the more successful you'll be in business, the less your costs will be, the easier it'll be to be profitable. So that's just an attitude there. That's not any particular thing. It's learn how to do stuff yourself and quit delegating everything and delegate yourself into the poorhouse. Learn to do stuff and you'll have much better chance of success. Learn to do stuff. And that, that is so true because as you can do the things, you know, a, a mistake that I made early on is uh, everybody was saying delegate, 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 <laughs> outsource, outsource, outsource. And, you know, it was great. Like I actually outsourced a lot of stuff, which was awesome. And until, I am actually for it on I was specific say, until things. Yeah. They went out of business <laughs> and I didn't know how to do <laughs> the things that were needed to do to run the business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. so I would even say that is, you know, as you look at, delegation, as you look at outsourcing, uh, know what you're outsourcing and, and understand it and know how to be able to do it or have that backup plan. Because a mistake that I made early on was actually outsourced something on, on WordPress. And, you know, it was like at the time Tom had, uh, so my first few websites actually built after going through, Tom had a, probably still has a course on like yeah. how to build a WordPress web cor- uh, website, website for less than 20 bucks mm-hmm. and went through it. And then there was just some design elements that I was just like, yeah, I can't, I really don't know how to do this. And so I outsourced somebody to do it, but you know, they ran off with a lot of money. And so they had uh, my money. I had no website and I also had the, well, that money wasn't even mine to begin with because we've told the story before, you know, that was money that my mom gave me to help me start the business. And so then I owed my mom money. I owed myself. I didn't have a website. I didn't have a way to sell things, but a designer had $5,000 somewhere. So it was, uh, (laughs) (laughs) well, that was, like I said, like 2012 and over the past eight years, uh, going through your programs with your mentorship and, you know, your friendship, I, uh, I'll say I've made a lot less mistakes. Uh, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I still make them. And I think that, that any business owner, when you go out, when you're trying new things, when you're doing them, you know, you're going to make those mistakes. And I think that's also uh, another part of my journey has been, you know, I wish I would have made some mistakes sooner because when you make that mistake, you can learn from it and move forward. Yeah, and I just want people to keep the mistakes, uh, the cost of the mistakes to a minimum, and that's from the knowledge. And then when you do outsource, which I am a perfect uh, uh, example of it, I know how much things should cost and how long they should take. I may not know how to do them, or it might be a programming job, although we don't do much of that. We use off-the-shelf stuff, but anything that I outsource, I already know how long it should take and how much it should cost. And that way, people can't rip you off from, you know, overcharging you literally a hundred times what something should cost. You know, you'll get hit for if you don't know what's going on. And there is a a thing that you can use to get better deals from people. And it's a very simple thing to say. I forget who I learned this from. But it's like when you're going for a bid for something, you say, this should be easy for somebody that knows what they're doing. Write that down, everybody. <laughs> this should be easy for somebody that knows what they're doing. Because that implies that you know what the job entails. You're just farming it out rather than you're clueless and they can take you for, you know, whatever they want. See, so that's a good good little <laughs> thing there when you are outsourcing. <laughs> well, Tom, this, this should be easy for someone that knows what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> where can people uh, find you online, connect with you, and... What one piece of advice as we close out today would you would you give people? Okay, well, to find me, you probably want to pick up uh, uh, ScrewTheCommute.com. And every Monday, I do a training session. And on Wednesdays and Fridays, I interview great entrepreneurs. And uh, both Warren, if you know Warren, and uh, Roberto have been on there twice each, I think. And I rarely have people on twice, only the great ones. And uh, so that leads you, if you put a slash resources, screw the commute.com slash resources, to all my free and paid stuff and everything I got. But uh, you might want to check out the mentor program. Like I said, it's the longest running, most successful ever 
online. Uh, it's greatinternetmarketingtraining.com, greatinternetmarketingtraining.com, and it includes a scholarship to the school that we referenced earlier in my intro that's the only licensed, dedicated internet marketing school in the country, which you can gift to somebody else. One guy, I don't know if you know this, uh, Roberto, one guy joined a mentor program and then gifted uh, the uh, school to his daughter. After four months in the school, she was up making $6,000 a month on a side gig you know, from the school. So, And then she quit her job and, uh, and uh, off to the races in her own business. So, so very powerful. So uh, you can lead, get to there through greatinternetmarketingtraining.com. And then the, uh, the main thing that uh, I'd like people to know is not any specifics of marketing or anything like that, is that uh, the concept of give before you get. Just give, 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 give to people, help them and do good things. And it really does come back in spades. I mean, you don't try to do it with that in mind, but it, it just it just happens that uh, the more you give, the more you get. So uh, that's uh, there. I got a story to go with that for another day. There you go. Tom and Tian will be back and you're going to have an open loop in your head until we see them <laughs> the next time. So That's the Zagarnik technique. <laughs> absolutely. So y'all, thanks for joining us. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the show. It's a great way to get notified every time that I post a new show and we got some crazy successful people. Uh, and when I say crazy successful, they might just be a little bit crazy in the head. Uh, but come on out, join us for the rest of the episodes and we will chat with y'all soon. Bye-bye.